everybody and welcome to a surprise review where today I review one of the biggest fantasy movie flops of our time, The Golden Compass, directed by Chris Weitz, um, based on the book The Northern Lights by Philip Pullman, and it, which is the first of uh, the Dark Materials trilogy, which um, <coughs> never, which uh, which installments two and three never saw to uh, the big screen. Uh, this movie came out about ten years ago. <laughs> it's ten years old now, which is bizarre. Um, yes. So I, for whatever reason, me and my sister were talking about this movie earlier, and we we basically decided to rewatch it. Uh, after not having seen it for a while, and truth be told, I'd actually forgotten a lot about this film, and I can see why. Um, okay, I'll give you the basic synopsis. It is quite a complicated story, but I'll I'll give you the general synopsis of this film anyway. Um, basically, the whole thing revolves around a parallel universe where humans um, have animals that live alongside them as the other half of their soul. Uh, they're known as demons, so each person has a different kind of animal who has a distinct personality that almost um, that, that is connected to them. So if they get hurt, the demon gets hurt too, etc. Um, we focus on this young girl named Lyra who is at this college. She's she doesn't have any parents, um, at least that we know of up to this point. Um, she's a bit of a troublemaker. She's a bit of a brat. She doesn't really know. She's, she's not really they're not keeping her under control and then this mysterious woman known as Marisa Coulter she comes in and basically sweeps Lyra away uh, to the north because uh, her uncle Lord Azriel is a is a is an explorer he he's going to the north to study the northern lights um to basically study this mystical force known as dust um and yeah so Lyra goes with Coulter and then she discovers Coulter is not all that she seems. And then it ends up being a adventure where Lyra has to go and rescue the children that have been kidnapped um, for the intercision process. So, yeah, that's really all I can say. I can't go into detail. I must confess, I haven't actually read all of the book. I've read the first few chapters. It is quite complicated, um, I must say. Oh. The Golden Compass. I really wanted to like this movie. I really wanted to like it because the concept is fascinating um, and the world that these characters live in. But this movie's a mess. This is a creative mess. I am shocked. I'm, I'm appalled, really. This is one of the worst fantasy movies. Like it's it's really weak. It really is. Um, Basically, New Line Cinema distributed this. I mean, this is very clear that they're basically looking for the next Lord of the Rings epic, which uh, sadly never was. Um, I don't know what happened with the production of this movie, but it looks like it didn't go well at all. Um, I think, basically... I mean, I mean, I don't think it's a complete fail. I just think that the storytelling is a mess. Like, the story is so incomprehensibly told. The first 30 minutes are actually somewhat promising. The first 30 minutes are quite good. I mean, it could do with a little bit more exposition into the um, the actual concept and the kind of the, the lore of, of, of the whole thing. Um, but I do feel... I do feel that, um, you know, there, there was enough in there for me to go, yeah, it's good, I, I, was, I was enjoying it. Sorry about that. Yeah, um, and, you know... The story is a mess. Like, it's confusing, it's convoluted, I don't really care. I think it's... The problem is it feels very disjointed. It feels like there was a, there are a lot of scenes missing from this. And the movie just cuts off, it just ends. I mean, it, it's unfinished. <laughs> it's not finished. I mean, you have... Um, the first act is, like I said, it's pretty promising. Um, you know, it shows promise. Um, some nice tension there. Um... The second act is okay, it kind of gets a bit slow as it goes along. And then the third act is just terrible. Like the, the the climax of this movie is so bad, it really is. 
the final battle is terrible. It's over within like a minute. You know, they basically slapped it together at the last minute. <laughs> you could tell there's no there's no passion, there's no dedication that's been put into this film. Everybody's farting their way through it. And yeah. It ends up being a mess. <laughs> I mean, let's talk about the cast, shall we? Let me get my list of the cast up. Um, I think the first person to mention is Dr. Blue Richards, who I think believe this is her debut, actually. I think she makes her debut here as Lyra. Um, mm, I, I'm sorry, guys. I think she was a miscast, to be honest. Um, she's not terrible, but... Like, she tried. She tried, but... I don't think the material she had to work with was very good whatsoever. Um, I think that she kind of, you know, she she gets annoying at times. I know the character is is meant to be a bit of a brat, and you know that's all right. But for me, the problem is her character is not developed well enough. There's no progression. You start they focus way too much on her, and you know, not enough on the world itself. You know, um, I mean, she becomes very dull to watch after a while. I mean, that's not probably not necessarily her fault, but that's probably just the script. It's like focusing on her every two minutes. And every time, you know, she gets very sassy, very bitchy, and it, it gets really annoying at times. She can be annoying, but it's the way the character's written. Um, the performance, at least, she she tried with what, what she had to work with, I guess. But um, and her accent is really slippy. I don't know what sort of accent she's trying to do, but what... At one point, it's sounding a bit posh, and then it's sounding very like London, like Cockney, you know, right, you know, Lyra, you know. Ugh. It's it's wasted. It's wasted potential. I mean, the the one thing that is basically saying to me that they're trying to go for a Lord of the Rings epic here is by casting Ian McKellen and Christopher Lee, Sir Ian McKellen and Sir Christopher Lee in these the roles they have. I mean, Christopher Lee is only in the film for one scene. Um as one of the high counsellors. Um, I mean, you know, it's like, yeah, Saruman's in this film. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, there's nothing to say on him. And then you have Ian McKellen as Yurik. As much as I love Ian McKellen, miscast. It's a miscast, because Yurik is... Um, he's not meant to be, like, a wise old man. He's not meant to be, like, a wise Gandalf-type character. His character is a fighter, a warrior, and I don't think... Ian McKellen's voice suited it whatsoever. I mean, he tried. Again, he tried. He gave it his all. Um, like, Lyra Balakwa, I will call you Lyra Silvertongue. Like, he gave it a nice, booming, epic voice. And that, you know, it was it was all right, but I just thought, it doesn't fit, really. It doesn't fit. And also, he's too, his voice is too old. I think you needed somebody younger. Um, he could do with that similar kind of booming voice, but just someone who's younger, so... Unfortunately, that was a miscast for me. Um, <clears throat> Nicole Kidman uh, as Marisa Coulter. She's she's good. Um, I I find I find her a bit weird in certain moments. Like her voice is raspy and very kind of croaky. Like no one can ever truly understand me. You know, she like in the first scene she's in, she talks like that, and it's very like what? What? <laughs> you know? What? Oh, Lyra, just you know, like she. Has a very kind of breathy, raspy kind of voice, um, and it does work for the most part. She's very creepy in her role. Um, there's a scene when she slaps her demon across the face, the monkey, and it's really creepy. And she's like, "I'm sorry, I'm sorry." Like, you're like, "Fucking hell!" Ugh. She's very scary. I'll give her that. She's quite intimidating. Um, so yeah, she's she's probably one of the stronger members of the cast. Um, Ian McShane as Ragnar the Bear, he's good. He's only in one scene, um, but he's pretty good. Um, and then you have a couple of other voice actors. I mean, Eva Green's in this movie. Wasted. Absolutely wasted. Most of the cast in this movie are wasted. She plays this witch called Serafina Pecola. She's in two scenes. She only appears halfway through on the boat and then at the very end. I mean, she also narrates the prologue as well. Um... But, you know, generally speaking, she's she's wasted in this movie. Um, you have Ben Walker, who plays Roger. It's funny, I actually know somebody called Ben Walker. It's not the Ben Walker who's in this movie, but I have a friend called Ben Walker. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of funny. 
he's all right, you know, the kids are okay in this film, you know, they do what they can, <clears throat> um, Kristen Scott Thomas is still Mario, she's all right, um, Jim Carter is John Farr, he's, he's good, he, he gives it, he gives it his all, um, and you've got Daniel Craig in this movie, now I happen to be a really big fan of Daniel Craig, uh, he's my favorite James Bond, and I happen to think he's a very good actor, he's very talented, um, Again, the guy is wasted. He's only in three scenes in this movie. He's his main body of scenes of screen time is is in the first ten minutes of the movie, and then he appears like another one scene, and then he's captured, and then you know he he's he kind of has one little moment after that. So he's absolutely wasted. I mean, again, the performance was great, but Daniel Craig as Lord Asriel was wasted. Um, and, you know, the direction is all over the place. This movie just goes out of control. It it the, it completely falls apart. I mean, this is a very interesting concept. This 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 could have been a fantastic two-hour epic, or two and a half hours even. But it's rushed. It's completely rushed. It's one hour, 48 minutes. It feels completely, you know, <clears throat> structureless. You know, it's just slapped together. It completely falls apart after the first act. And... You know, it doesn't. Nothing, there's nothing there to enjoy. I mean, the visuals of the film are nice. There's some nice visual effects. Um, also, Freddie Highmore. I forgot to mention Freddie Highmore voices Pantalame, and he's good. Um, and the opening prologue is nice. Um, you have the kind of effect when when Lai reads the compass. Um, there's some nice visual effects there. So I do appreciate that the filmmakers did that. <coughs> But it's just the storytelling is so poor that, you know, you start to, you really, you you, you, you just start to lose interest very quickly. Um, <clears throat> so the cast do what they can, but again, the direction is all over the place. I will say the production design is very good. Um, it looks very out of this world, which I think is the intention, as it is set in a parallel universe. So I was down with that. Um, and the music score by Alexandra Desplat is very good. Um, I like that recurring theme, the da 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 That was very nice. Um, well, you have this awful end credits song where this, 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 um, I can't, don't know the artist's name, but she's just singing, Lyra, Lyra. Oh my god, what the fuck? That was a terrible song. Absolutely terrible. Like I said, it's not a complete fail. I don't hate the movie. Um, it is it is pretty rubbish. <laughs> I mean, you know. Um, and, you know, I feel really sorry for the cast. You know, this if there's anything that needs to be remade, it's this movie. <clears throat> because this had potential. It's an absolute waste of potential. It really is. I mean, there are some occasional dramatic scenes... But they don't amount to anything because you're, the, the story is so disjointed. I mean, the poster for this movie looked awesome. I was like, wow, this could be a really good epic. But yet, yeah, it wasn't. I mean, the whole concept of it is fascinating. But it's it's a waste of potential. I mean, like I said, production design is good. The music score is good. Some of the acting is good, you know, you know for the most part. <clears throat> and the visual effects and CGI are very impressive. Um, the final battle is awful. It really, really is terrible. Um, <clears throat> and also, you, you know, when you waste when you waste such talent like um, Eva Green, Derek Jacobi, Daniel Craig, it really kind of, you know, it really puts a damper on this, you know. And, you know, I appreciate Dr. Blue Richards tried with what she had, but it's just not... You know, this movie isn't compelling. <coughs> I mean, it's quite horrific... Um, there's there's a couple of horrific moments. The first of which being um, when you see Billy Costa without his demon. I thought that was quite horrifically scary. And the death of Ragnar when he says, "Is that all?" And Yurik just smacks him across the face, breaks his you know jaw off, and then he <coughs> breaks his neck. It's that was really graphic for <clears throat> a PG. Um, yeah, it's funny actually. I had played the video game in this movie. And it's a sad thing when you have to say that a movie game is better than the actual movie. But I genuinely think that the game of this movie is better, <laughs> simply because it's structured 
you know, there's the they have the whole story. I mean, there were there was a lot of scenes in this trailer in the trailer for this movie that weren't in the movie, and I feel like the movie's true climax was removed. I don't know why that is. I think there's been there was some post production issues or something. Um, they must have they struggled to get the film out on time. Um, I mean, it's not terrible. There's you know there's, there's there's stuff to enjoy, but it's I don't think I mean if you're a fan of the books, you'll hate this movie. Um, it disappoints in pretty much most areas. Like I said, with only like three or four good things, I'm gonna have to rate this film a four out of ten. Believe me, I did not want to rate it that low. I want to give this like a 10 out of 10, a 9 out of 10, but it's a mess. It's a mess. And, you know, I really hope one day that somebody comes along and reboots this. Hell, Peter Jackson, he could make a great trilogy out of this. Because the subtle knife and the amber spyglass never actually got made after this, which was a shame. This was the only one that <clears throat> they ever did. They never actually finished the trilogy, <laughs> which was a shame. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think it was their plan to, to do the, the, the other two, but this film did so poorly that it was scrapped, which is a shame, really, because I was looking forward to actually seeing how they were going to, how they were going to do this, but, yeah. Oh, well, that's that. That's my review of The Golden Compass. What do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Put your comments down below. Let me know. Um, stay tuned for some future reviews, so... Thank you guys all for watching, and until then, I'm Mr. Tardis11, and see ya.